Hello, welcome back to another video. So I thought I would just sit and have a bit of a nail play. And these feathers beautiful. I've got them from Nail Sugar. And I'll show you the bag. So you can get a bag of assorted feathers from Nail Sugar. I'm not sure if she's doing it at the moment. I've had these quite a while. I will link it. And these beautiful peacock tear stones from A and A Glitter. These are beautiful because I went through a phase of just buying loads of stuff. I mean, I'd like to go through that phase, but I can't afford it, so I don't. So uh, I just thought I'd tip these out and show you what they look like. But I thought I'd just do a peacock inspired set, as you can probably tell by the, the feather and the gems. Um, but I thought I'd just show you what they look like because they are absolutely beautiful. They're stunning, absolutely stunning. And I wish I had not made the mistake I made. So I've got a tip, <coughs> a clear tip, and really I should have painted it. Because after I picked the, the glitter up, because I've got to go and find that now, I can't remember which one I used. Uh, I've got to figure it out. Um, I really should have painted the tip black. And I didn't think about it until way later when I was actually doing the feather and then I top coated it and I'm like, I should have painted it would have made the glitter stand out more would have made the nail stand out more but i got so excited <laughs> didn't think about it so i've just put my clear coat on top of my glitter just to hold it into place now i've never done this before um yes i know there's youtube videos about it and i should have really used to watch the video but i didn't and i should have so if you ever try and do something my advice is and you've never done it before watch a video first on someone that's done it before because I made a pig's ear of this. So I thought what I do is I put a clear coat on it. I was trying to figure out where am I going to stick this feather. So I thought I'd use acrylic, put it down and it will sit in acrylic nice and yada yada yada. Mm. I had such issues trying to get it to stick in the acrylic, like to stay in place. See now it don't look too bad but at the end I'm not happy with the way it turned out. So uh, what I did was I just pushed it into that wet acrylic and then I held it down on the sides a bit. And then once it stayed, I put a bit more clear acrylic over the top and let that set just a bit, enough for me to be able to at least trim the side. Um, <clears throat> I did sort of make a right pig's ear of this. There's got to be an easier way to stick this stuff down. And like I said, should have watched the video. Um, yeah, so I'm holding it and I'm just waiting for it to set. And then what I do is I just get my scissors and I just looked at it upside down and then I just trimmed it up the side, like the bits of feathers off. Um, you can keep those bits for other projects that you want to do. Um, but as you can see, as I was touching it, the acrylic was started to sort of like get solid and it was just, it, the application was not pretty, I must say. say. But it did work in the end, sort of. You'll see, like, because I do something I wasn't thinking of doing. So I'm trying to hold it down. I think maybe next time I might try glue or something. Look, I even got my tweezers to try and just squidge it down. And then I was pushing it down with the side of my tweezers. I mean, yeah, the application was pants. So next time, maybe I should try glue and see how it goes with glue. Um, glue probably make it stick better. Um, but yeah, I was just using the side of my tweezers really just to push it down and making sure that it stayed within place within reason. So once I was sort of happy with that, I just got a clear coat of acrylic, put that on and just left it to set basically. Oh no, I didn't, I pinched it a bit more. Oh yeah, because I put it at the tip because the tip was a bit funny. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just, I just sort of like played about with it. I mean, I would never do this on someone's finger. Mm -mm -mm. I'd make sure I got that application perfect before I'd done that on someone. So then I went in with my clear bead and I just gave it a clear coat um, just to make sure that it was completely covered and that all the sides were covered and I dragged it down to the tip and yeah, no, the usual gum. Um, yeah, tied it up around the cuticle, left it to set. That's me pausing it. I should take that bit out, but I'm not gonna. Right, so this is it, filed and everything and set. So what I did was I got a bit of um, polish from Glitter Bells 
and I just I don't know if you can see see I, this is what happens when I go too close I didn't realize you can sort of figure out I'm going around the edge I have filed it but it's not very pretty and when I filed the tip it, it just it filed a bit too much away so I had to try, sort of like try and make it match around the tip a bit see that's the thing if you make if you make a mistake you can always cover it with a little bit of polish I suppose if you think you can get away with it in your design um, what I did was I polished, I, like, I drew an outline around the edge with the green because it was like the right sort of green to do. And then I baked that under my light for 30 seconds and then I wiped it. And then I noticed there was a little bit sticking out so I buffed it and then I just done it again just to make sure it had a decent cover of the green on it. But as you can see, classic Mish style at a shot. But I'm going around it, um, around the cuticle, just to give it a cuff, like an edge. Cuff? Edge? No. Edge. Yeah, edge sounds better. So once I've done that, I just bake it in my light. And I'm like, okay. So once I've done that, what do I do next? I thought, well, now that I've done that, I'll have to put on my gem. And I didn't know, I was sitting there for a few minutes trying to figure out how to put my gem on. See, it's not too bad. Put my gem on. The filing could have been done better. I just saw that end, it looked ropey. So I just got a bit of my rhinestone gel and I just had a shot again. But what I tried to do was place the gem in the same sort of direction as the dots would go. That's why it's at a funny at like a funny slant. Um, there you go, in shot. So that's why it's like that. Because I was trying to place it in the same sort of direction. And then what I got was a bit of um, glue and I just went around the edges with some microbeads. But again, you're out of shot, Mish. I've got to sort my life out, boy. <laughs> I've got a lot to learn on this recording malarkey, I tell ya. Um, I did try other designs, but I was like, nope, I cut them all out. <laughs> so this video is short and sweet, I hope. Um, I just used my brush because it had some glue on it already. And because I put glue around the edge, I just was just getting my micro beads and just going around the edge of it just to um, frame it. And they also will hold the gem into place as well. So if you're putting a gem on someone that's got a bit of an edge that sticks out, like this one did the point stuck out a little so it made it look a bit high just put some micro beads around that and what it does is it secures it into place um and then yeah i once i was happy with that i just what i did was i went up to it so again like i showed you on previous videos if you're you can do it, it doesn't matter if you get micro bead like top coat on your micro beads but there you go this is it finished um, let me know what you think, hit like, subscribe, subscribe and the bell and I shall see you in another video. Take care, I'll speak to you all later, you have a lovely week, bye.